the, the sound is okay, no? With this, the sound is good. Olá, pessoal. Boa tarde. Bem-vindos, então, à última live do curso. E só um minutinho que a gente já vai começar. A gente está testando, fazendo os últimos testes. E aí, daqui a pouco, daqui a alguns minutinhos, a gente vai ter aqui o prazer de receber o doutor José Manuel, CEO da Regemat. Só um minutinho. Então, pessoal, essa é a nossa última live. A gente está ajustando o som ainda, tá? É, lembrando, então, que as lives ficam salvas depois aqui no canal. E elas vão ficar disponíveis aqui até o final desse ciclo, né? Dessa oitava edição do curso de cultivo celular 3D da GESEL. Então, a gente encerra esse ciclo... É... Na próxima semana, em São Paulo, na nossa imersão, em parceria com o Pendorf e com o Senai Biotecnologia, ok? Então, quem ainda não assistiu, queria assistir alguma live, é melhor correr, que a gente vai deixar disponível, então, até o final da oitava edição. A oitava edição, então, se encerra em grande estilo com a nossa imersão lá no Senai de Biotecnologia, no, em São Paulo, ok? And uh, now it's a, a real pleasure introduce to, to you, for everybody, uh, Dr. José José Manuel, CEO of, uh, from Regemate 3D, And uh, he will uh, present, present to, to everybody today uh, some advances in your company and also some important concepts on 3D bioprint. Thank you for your presence here, Dr. Jose. Muito obrigado. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here in the channel. I had the pleasure to be in the course in 2018 there yeah. in Rio yeah. de Janeiro, no? Yeah. in the metro and now a, a pandemic and a war and several years later i'm very very happy to to be here and hopefully next time i will be also also there i'm going to present you a bit of my background and and my work in the in my companies then please let me know when you can see the screen it's it works it's well i'm Excellent. My background is from engineering. I got my my degree in, me in industrial mechanical engineering in, from the Polytechnic University of, of Valencia. That is the city where I was born. Then after that, I moved to Germany and I stayed there for for nearly two years. Also to with with a program with a very very nice exchange program that was called a Erasmus program, and I did there the specialization of mechanical engineering. At that time, I was very focused on working with cars, you know, with green auto automotive industry, because in my city, my university is very li is quite linked to to the car industry because we have here a, a, a factory, a plant of four, and there in the university I was in Germany, Braunschweig University, they were very very 
linked to, to Volkswagen, to VW uh, brand. But at the time I was thinking that I was going to, to move my career, was around 2007, move my career to, to the bioengineering, to the application of engineering in, in healthcare. Then uh, I moved to Argentina for, for doing a, a research stay in 2008, and then I had the possibility of start working with, with biomedical engineering. And then I thought that it was going to, to be the, I was going to spend all my professional life on working on, on, the, on the applications of biology in, in, the, in, the, in the engineering. Then quite by casualty, I started to work on a project in Valencia, in a, in, a, in a very nice center of research, that is the Biomechanics Institute of Valencia, I started to work with 3D printing of medical devices. And several years later, in 2011, I started Preca Healthcare, that was my first company, that with the focus of applying the 3D printing on the development of medical device in order to customize the systems and adapt the solutions to the patients and not the patients to, to the solutions. Also by casualty, several years after that, say actually one year after that, I met a, a professor at the University of Granada, where we, in the city where we started the company, and he was doing autologous transplantation of chondrocytes. And then he asked me, I was printing titanium, we were printing with Breca titanium, and also some synthetic polymers for surgical guys, for implants, but uh, nothing, nothing from, from we were not involved from bioprinting at that time. And he asked me to develop a system, a 3D printer, but not for printing titanium, but for printing bio inks, biomaterials, in order to keep the chondrocytes, that were the cells that they were differentiating in his group, uh, mesenchymal stem cells to chondrocytes, in order to keep the cells in, in a three dimension, in three dimension, because he thought that the cells in the three dimensions, they were not going to dif differentiate, and they wanted to use the cells for autologous transplantation of chondrocytes. At that time, we started to develop a project inside Breca that was called Regemat. And then after several years in 2015, we started a new company with the brand in order to bring these kind of systems to, to, to research centers, no? And also to, to keep developing the technology in order to bring solutions to the clinical application. Also, we have another two projects. The, the last one is by Ingenieria, that is a YouTube channel where we try to, to upload videos regarding just related to the, to, to, to all the different fields of bioengineering, from biomedicine to uh, genetic engineering to also biomechanics. And also we have a, a project inside Regemar that is called Lab Methods, and it's where we invite the researchers to upload different protocols that can help other researchers around the world in order to, to recreate and to, and, to, and, to, and to keep advancing science towards the clinical application of this engineering. This is a, in this in this slide I show how how my companies interact each other. No, with Breca we develop custom made active systems in order to to reconstruct that injury and also to help for the surrounding tissues to in, to integrate. And with Regemat we go a bit further in, in technology and science and we try to create strategies and to create protocols in order to create tissues that can be implanted and also. With this, we, we aim at offering a very specific solution based on custom-made medical device and also the, the construct, the tissue, the biological and biological construct that can help to, re to reconstruct and to offer a specific solution. Then a, a very, very fast introduction. Now, now it's very easy to talk about 3D printing because uh, a lot of people we are involved, no? In, we know at least the, the different technologies for me what in 2008 i thought it was going to to be a, to have a very good in, a very big impact on medical devices it was the three advantages that for me are key in 3d printing this is an additive manufacturing procedure or it's a range of additive manufacturing procedure and this allows you to create very very complex shapes and if you want to reconstruct uh, anatomical defect as this one in the picture then you need a technology a powerful range of technologies that can create very very uh, uh, very specific and very complex shapes the second advantage is the ability of create of creating mesh structures this is very important for medical device because you can improve the interaction with the surrounding tissue but but is crucial for 
bioprinting because there you can print a structure, put inside the cells, and then you can also uh, tune, you can also control the biodegradation time that is is related to the to the volume and also to the to the contact area. And this is something that you can increase a lot using a mesh structure and also because and i will be talking about that uh, a bit later you can create a mesh structure that can help you to apply some stimuli some laws that can help you when you have a 3d construct a 3d, 3D scaffold which says can help you to transfer loads and to transfer stress which is what is going to do to make the cells to create a specific structural matrix that is at the end of the day at issue the third one is that being an additive manufacturing procedure, and this is very important for bioprinting, then you can get to the inner part of the construct and you can add the biological part, the cells or, or another biomolecules during the procedure. And so you can create a 3D culture. That was the, the first thing. With Breca, we have been implanting qu for quite a lot of time. This, the company was started in, in 2011 it was a, a bit complicated to get a custom-made medical device, 3D printed medical device license. But in 2014, we got this and we were implanting and we are still implanting quite a lot. We started with muscle, with neurosurgery, with musculofacial surgeries, and then and from, and we started with metals and moved to polymers that don't biodegrade, but can also have some advantage in in some specific surgeries. Then we also were talking, we're having meetings, holding meetings with, with surgeons and asking them how we, the technology and the custom, and this customization and this range of procedures to manufacture could help them to uh, to do their job. No? And, the, and one of the, the more specific products and solutions we found was this specific one about creating surgical guys for reconstruction of, of in a pediatric surgery of tranosinostosis. And then we started with very, very easy product with a very, very easy to do uh, solutions. Then we were adding a lot of value to, to, the, to, the, to the physician. Then we keep, we have been doing a lot of implants. Also we moved to more complex processes. And also we have been doing some specific surgeries in young patients not just using the surgical guys or the implants, but also taking uh, allografts for reconstruction in this specific case, a massive uh, osteochondral injury. And then in 2015, as I said before, we started to to, to commercialize the, the bioprinter with, with mainly the the main like specification were modularity that we wanted to, to have a system and a software that could help people working in a several range, people, 80% of the people using our systems, they are mainly developing biomaterials, developing new bio from organic source, from synthetic source, but in common they have that the, the biomaterials biodegrade and aim at regenerating uh, injury or creating a, a 3D model for drug development. Also, we have some, some like, uh, some of the users that are using the systems to print drugs and, to, and using the, the advantage of 3D printing to print multi-materials and, uh, and mesh structure pills. Then uh, now also we, we are very happy that bioprinting is well known around the, the research community. Then we have been in the industry from the very beginning, from 2011, where we started to develop the first system of the bioprinter. Now it's very easy to, to explain what is bioprinting. For me, is putting together the 3D printing technologies, this engineering and the development of new biomaterials, and also the, the cellular and the biological part of the regenerative medicine technologies. All together is what we now call bioprinting. This is the corporate video. I'm going to skip the videos because you can find everything in our YouTube channel, in Regemat 3D channel. Uh, and I'm going to focus more on, for us, what is very important when we are talking about bioprinting or in general about biofabrication. What you print, and it's very important for us to say that, is not a tissue. It's a 3D matrix with cells, and you can also add another biomolecule, but this itself is not a tissue. A tissue is something, a structure, that has a specific structural matrix, several kind of cells, and that develops a function. That's why Several years ago, we started also to put quite a lot of our research and development funding 
to the development of bioreactors. Um, for us, the bioreactors, we call BMAP bioreactors, that are bioreactors that mimic the anatomy, but also the physiology and our dynamic systems that once you print a construct, you put inside the bioreactor and the bioreactor is applying a stimuli in order to make the cells to create the specific proteins that conform the specific cellular matrix. And these are the two blocks that we call the two blocks for creating a, a, a living tissue. In both blocks, there is or there will be a lot of research. No? I mean, we have users that are working with the scaffold geometry, not using cells. Some of them are more focused on the cell source and how to, to do the cell culture. I still have a lot of work to do there. Some of them are, are more focused on the on the biomolecules that you are, the growth factor, the exosomes. And some of them, and now every time more and more, the people are starting to uh, take the results from bioprinting to move to the stimulation that could also be called the fourth dimension of the biofabrication procedure and to create a specific a specific tissue and the, and this is mainly all the general activity of the company we develop systems we develop procedures and we also are very very focused from our history you know because we came from a from a medical device and for a clinical company to bring biofabrication, tissue engineering based products to the clinical application. In general, this is an area that we call and is called advanced therapies no? that involve tissue engineering, but also genetic engineering and also uh, cell therapies and several others. We have in, in my ch in YouTube channel, we have also a video about that. Then this is the, the new version of the bioprinting. The industry has been grown quite a lot now from, from few players in 2011 to now we have uh, quite a lot of players, some of them more in the distribution, others in the development of BioInc. Some of them are very specific focus on, uh, on the systems or specific tissues. And then we are very happy to follow this industry and to be part of this industry. As, as I said before, we are focused and now the, the nearly all the market is for research. It's PR groups that are using the technology for developing some of the, of the topics or the parts that I mentioned before, but for us, it's very, very interesting and, and we're very, very, very passionate about the clinical translation. Uh, it may not be a, a complex organ to transfer to the clinical application, that is, this could take quite a lot of time, but just with the application that you can do using organic materials or already appro approved, clinically approved uh, biopolymers that can be used for regeneration and injury, then we are happy to to be part of this of this revolution in, in 2020 with the pandemic and also because we wanted to 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 be more independent with the with the with our research then we created also a, a cell culture and, and biofabrication lab inside the company that was quite a, a big challenge and now we this is growing and now we have a new facility where we have four researchers doing some postdoc and some PhD students doing their research. We, our research areas are more mainly focused on cartilage, bone, skin, and also we have the development of new biomaterials that conduct electricity in order to regenerate, to regenerate the spinal cord. And so some videos about the systems. And this is mainly an overview of our activity. No? We develop the procedures. I mean, this is very, very important. Uh, as I said before, for, a, for us it's key to design a procedure of biofabrication, not just thinking on the bioprinting part, but also thinking on what you're going to do after the bioprinting, what the stimuli that you're going to apply there. And now uh, we are focusing a lot on trying to create a specific tissue with cartilage, bone, and spinal cord uh, in vitro. And this is something that for us takes quite a lot of time. We also develop biomaterials. We are not, I mean, this is not a big part of our activity, but normally it's a big part of the activity of, of our users. And then we always do agreements so we can develop the biomaterial, we can help them. And in some cases, we also bring the, the bio ink, the biomaterial to our portfolio. And we also try to distribute because we are also converting regimals from a, from a bioprinting company to a, to a biofabrication solution uh, company and to a clinical supplier. We are one of the projects that we that we are involved, and I, I am mainly the, the person in the company that is that is focusing on that is the 
the creation of a regenerative medicine clinic in Mexico, where we can have our lab that is now under construction, but we, where we can be putting uh, some tissue engineering treatment that are already validated, and in the future, the biofabricated uh, okay. results and the biofabricating technologies. Uh, then, about talking a bit more about the bio inks, this there is always the, I think this is also a very interesting area to focus if you're a researcher, no, also, uh, to try to print, try to develop a new bio ink. As a as engineers, we like a lot some synthetic, some, some biodegradable synthetic polymers that as polycaplacton, polylactic acid. There are many of them that are already approved for several of them. But the cells normally they like to be in a matrix in a bio ink that is more similar to that what they found in, in vivo. No, this is oh, then it's very important to use something to create something as a skeleton and to fill this with the cells and with the with the organic or maybe a, a biomaterial that are derived from a extracellular matrix and then after that to bring to the bioreactor and to apply the specific stimuli in order to make the cells to create the, the matrix. Then there is a, still a lot of things to do. I mean, we are, I'm very happy for when, when I see in LinkedIn, for example, that you bioprinting, then you see a lot of people, or, or if you go to Thermis, several weeks ago, we had Thermis, I was not there, but, but we had a, a big representation of the company, how nearly, uh, or a very significant part of the talks and the presentation are focusing on the use of bioprinting, no? This is amazing. When in, in 2011, looking at, at LinkedIn, you found that maybe 10, 15 persons, 20, involved in, in bioprinting. Uh, we also publish quite a lot, or we have a wide range of publications using our systems that I'm, I will be very happy to, to share with any interested. I'm going to skip this because they're more specific from, from this. And also, if you are a researcher in, in tissue engineering, then please, feel happy or be invited to upload your specific protocols, your specific results that can help another researchers to get a starting point and to move um, because this is going to be very interesting for, for starting new collaborations. Now we know that science is a collaborative, uh, it's, it's a, it's, in science collaboration is key. And with this project, with lab method, we try to, to encourage, we try to promote the collaboration by by sharing the, the resource. There is in this is the the comp the project website, and you will you can find also some videos talking about this. And then the, our last posters and abstracts and, and the next publications are very very focused on on research about the results that we get in the in the beam in the new beam project reactor after the bioprinting and the stimulation in a system that is that mimics the condition of a real knee and that makes the the cells even if you use, you can use mesenchymal stem cells from adipose tissue metopoietic from bone marrow you can also use the chondrocytes from different sources how the cells are expressing a specific uh, chondrogenic genes after being stimulated by the system. Also in our YouTube channel, you can find some specific technologies because in the, the range of technologies that you can use in a regime of bioprinting is quite quite diverse. Just to finish, then as a company, I'm more focused on, on a project as GCL, no, that is a, a, a industry project. Then we have been closing the say, two months ago, our second crowdfunding round. Uh, and then with this, we aim to, to keep moving, to keep developing the solutions, to bring as soon as possible solutions to the technical application. And here in our channel, that is just so far, it's just in Spanish, but I'm pretty sure you speak in Portuguese as a mother language, mother tongue, you will be very, very easy for it. will be very easy for you to understand. Uh, also, the, what does the future hold? Then this is in. I, I'm a fan no, of of the of what is coming no, what is coming in the future, and um, and I was wondering like several years ago, uh, if bioprinting were going to biofabrication in general were going to be uh, something for re to to regenerate an injury, 
but in there is also another a very very big growing and, and burning industry that is the longevity industry and i was wondering how bioprinting is going to fit together and i, and I found a a book that in a congress in mexico the online congress it was in mexico this replacing aging that they can recommend to the people that mainly states that the key solutions the key approaches to keep us being with living more um, in a better condition that is the more important is going to be bioprinting is going to be regenerative medicine taking a, a like like an approach of replacing damaged tissues no we know we uh, people in science we know that uh, getting aging is is a, is a consequence of many sources of many procedures and um, many mistakes that accumulate many different sources and the theory of replacing that as we we say this is in the future or the book states that in the future we will go to a regenerative medicine clinic to replace tissues to replace part as we go uh with our cars to 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 replace parts that damage and so we can keep the car working for many years and then for me it's like it was like linking together my past as a motorsport and I'm very focused on mechanical engineering and the automotive industry and now working with bioprinting. Then thanks a lot. And I am very happy to stay here with you uh, and answer all your questions. Very nice presentation. Um, it is uh, always uh, nice to see how a company develop and the growth and uh, I think it's um, a part of the bioengineer uh, development it's also uh, a great uh, um, know-how you know because it's totally different from our academic side yeah <laughs> It's something when when you start a company, no, you you always think, okay, I'm going to to as a scientist, no, or or as a or as a te technical person, and then after you realize that the world of the companies are completely different, no. Then mm -hmm. we, in Redimal, we try to to keep growing the company, but to keep the an eye, one eye in the business development, in the company development, but another one in research, no, because at the end of the day, we are doing this for researchers, and if you want to translate things to the clinical application, to have to be, to be, I mean, like keeping an eye on everything. I mean, as I said before, science is collaborative, and then we try to, and we're moving our our new projects to something that not just selling systems, but also helping to connect people, helping to to advance the science to to what for us is the important thing that is the clinical application and is the patient benefiting for all the work that we, as a company and you as a researcher, put every day there working a lot. You know, in the lab there we are doing <laughs> yeah 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 um when i think it today about these companies that uh the their foundation relies on hard science uh you need to do both the commercial side and uh, not stop it to develop it, innovation yeah yeah i i agree i agree I totally agree with you yeah and also and, trying uh, to look, sorry <laughs> and also trying to go for for this collaborative because uh, because then i mean you can do a lot of things by yourself but not all and then to to expand your brain uh, then the good thing is science is like that science is collaborative science mm -hmm. is a collaboration a social part of our society yeah yeah and i i didn't know uh, the the website lab methods methods and uh, i think it's very nice to share the protocols and uh, to learn with each other because uh, the bioprinting is still at the beginning uh, even for academics you know yeah and uh, yeah it's a great uh, a great idea this is what, what we found then because nearly nearly 60 70 percent of people that were like contacting for for having information about the systems the the experience they had the with bioprinting was 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 very poor no and they say okay can you give me publications can you give me 
And then we thought, okay, why? Because sometimes application is too, is a world, is a, is a very extensive world. But in order to start for, with something, with a specific protocol for, for, for attention, for sales or for a biomaterial preparation, you need all the publication. And it's also a, a very big help if you have contact to the person that has developed this, no? And there in lab methods, you can upload, but you can also contact the, the author and you can ask him or her, what can you help me? And then this is start a collaboration, this is a connection, and this, this could lead to a project together, to a project proposal. And this is what makes science to advance. And this is what makes that people use bioprinting more and that we can we get a standardization of protocols, no? That is something that we love quite a lot. That is the replication of things, the replication of, of everything in the lab, because normally you see uh, like a project that for a for a dissertation or for a or for a PhD, and after that, after the dissertation, then we don't have, I mean, the, to give continuity, at least here in Europe or, or I mean, yeah, anywhere more in Spain, to give continuity to researcher is not very, very easy uh, for the public centers because they cannot keep people more than three years. And this makes like, yeah, okay, the publication is good, but to have a person involved and to have, to have a person like acting there, like solving, of course, now this also have, because at the end of the day, we are a company, also have a, 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 a business value proposition no that is that once you want to replicate all the the protocol then you get a, you press a, a you click and then you get you can get if you want you can get all the information on the product that has been used and you can get all the products in just one click just one invoice and then with this we give also uh, like an incentive to the author and so we can we keep the incentive for both parties no that is what makes at the end of the day people to to put effort and people and so they can also keep like funding the research that is also very very important yeah yeah standardization of the protocols is the key for the translations to the industry to the hospitals because uh for example when you think about cell therapy today we already have the protocols but it's so difficult to prove that cell therapy is really efficient. You know that as a researcher, because you see the mm. participations from, of clinical trials, but show these in terms of numbers is so difficult. I, yeah, and uh, people discuss all the time and uh, always come back to the importance of Eastern standardizations the, of the protocols, because every lab do different there is a difference, subtle difference on the protocol, and uh, it's so hard to prove it that. Mm -hmm. This yeah. is what we saw, and, it, and this is why we, op we we tried several years ago to open a bit more the, the scope, the scope of, of, of where we were thinking or or the areas we were, uh, and to move to more advanced therapies. Because you say, okay, this, if, if you think on, on, a, on a hip processes, a craneoplasty, then the technology behind, I mean, talking about electrobeam melting, for example, that is one of the of the main technologies for printing titanium, the technology behind is amazing. But at the end of the day, you have a procedure, you have the characterization of the material, and then you have a, a heating procedure, a sintering afterwards, and then it's always the same procedure, but in bioprinting, no? In bioprinting, the, we are always trying to print with different composition of the material, and that makes mm -hmm. the procedure to be different. And also, about the biological part and if you we and we really at the demand want to transfer translate it to the clinical application we realize and, and that's why we went more inside the old cell therapies and, and to understand why things are working and why things are not working and this is depending a lot on the patient and this is depending a lot on the quality mm, of the ah, yeah yeah and this is something that you can you ha we, ha we have to, to and this is why we wanted also to to have the own lab inside now with the with this new project or this approach that we've been working for a lot of time, but now it's going to it's going to 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 convert in a relatively amazing clinic with a lab lab inside, so we can measure everything and we, we can figure out and we can understand why cell therapies are working in some patients and it's not are not working in some other patients. And this could and this is a, a multi-source dynamic. Uh, because cells are, uh, as you know, many times we are thinking, okay, how we are going to to improve the resolution of the printing, but then the cells are moving around, are doing many things. There are, it's a multi-factor problem, no? Uh, in engineering, 
one of the things that that made science advance a lot it was the development of of computational simulations i was doing in 2009 and 10 at Oxford Bruce when I was there doing my master of motorsport, uh, we were doing a lot of simulation with fl computational fluid dynamics. And we had quite reliable models. And before with the finite element methods, no, to re to be to get simulations. But so far we don't have a, a accurate and a well proof simulator of the dynamic of the biological behavior of a living cells from a specific patient. And this makes that a lot of has been that has to be a lot of experimental but i think in the next years we will have this and we will have always a lot of automation no with with many many solutions that have, have been helping because if you look at a lab 30 years ago of course there is now systems new technologies what the work that has been done with the sequencing of of, of genomes and, and the reduction of the cost is huge but still you find people that doing pipetting no that is some of the things that is quite manual no and this is we think in the next years and also with all the new technologies with Nobel Prize, CRISPR uh, develop that is going to allow to modify a lot and to and also with some other compounds that can also help to or IPS that can help to bring cells to the early stage pluripotential state or the the confluence of many technologies of a lot of science that mm -hmm. makes think that the future is going to be promising and amazing for all the people uh, focus on tissue engineering. Yeah, yeah, sure. When you think about this model uh, coming from 3D bioprinting, we already have the conversion of bioprinting and uh, organoids, IPS, like you said, and um, mm. people start to talking more deeper about uh, the personalized medicine. Maybe the answer is that it's not something that you, you like a drug that you can prove for everybody or, or for the most of the patients. Maybe it's uh, something that you need to have a uh, approach, a personal personalized approach. Yeah. This totally, totally, totally agree with you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, and uh, and uh, when you put cells on the process, uh, it's becoming more changely <laughs> every time. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, I will ask to you when, when you show about the the beginning of the company uh, relies on three D printing and three uh, D printing processes uh, are already in the market. And uh, when you think about three D bioprinting. What do you believe that um, maybe the main the main issues that can impair the 3D bioprint translation today? Yeah. What do you think that you need to work more and more? Well, th thinking on thinking on that that you in the clinical application you may, may find even a lot of like area a lot of applications even without the cells you know using bioprinter no with just putting for example with cartilage just creating a biodegradable custom made uh autologous transplantation of chondrocyte membrane this also for bone i mean we can we can always find some applications uh that ca that, that we don't need to use the cells or we can use the cells or, or the surrounding tissue to facilitate the cells or even just to put the matrix with some the so like signals some exosomes that can also help at some point to bring cells and to bring there uh, for us taking this apart no that don't don't need the the advances the advancement of of science on cell culture we think that there are two 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 of the main keys or challenges that are the, the cell culture, the protocol, no? I mean, we, we think it's easy to, we always say, okay, we print cells, but to work with cells is 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 very tricky and some cases and the reproductivity, as we say. And also, and the, the second one is to put more attention, not just on the printing procedure, but on what you do to the 3D cell construct after the printing, because mm, yeah. what you print is not our cells in 3D, 
but this is not the tissue itself. The tissue itself is something with the structural matrix and the right function. And then this to put, and we think in the next year we will see also a lot of research and a lot of automation in the first part, research automation and, and protocols that can help to have a, a certain grade of, of standardization and also a lot of on the mechanical stimuli or the stimuli that we apply to the 3D construct in order to make the cells to create a specific tissue. That mm -hmm. is what we need for yeah, yeah. regenerate an injury. Yeah, today uh, you can print cells, you can print bio inks, and uh, you can transplant in the mice, rats. But uh, yeah, uh, when you think about maturation, differentiations, because um, if you are thinking about how uh, I you I you have an organ, an entire organ, functional organ, you are you need a step of maturations in vitro in the lab and uh, we don't have this today yeah when uh, when you see the papers and uh, when uh, scientists of a tissue engineer talk with each other i already heard something like that it's something oh no you need to to construct your tissue engineer okay your tissue and uh, only few days after you need to trans transplant because otherwise it will not work so well. Because you, you, today you cannot, you don't have um, technology to maintain these constructions for a long term, for months. That is the timing needed for the maturation. Yeah. This is still, we are in the early beginning, but as, uh, as soon as we can create the, first the physical model that we are creating, then simulation tools now the power of computers is has been increasing a lot and yeah? once we have the simulation that we, that we can go to to the experimental like part that when we know or when we have an estimation of what is going to be the behavior then we will be very very fast at this and then we will have to focus more on the afterward no? the post processing yeah. Even, but this happened also with the implants the, people think that the implants this structure with with the, that is the, you just press a button print and you get this structure and after that you have to to the the, the polishing to the this is always a post processing no that is very very important uh, uh, as you say to keep the the culture and the tissues alive this is something that that is key we think with the simulation is going to be the the one in very important like area of discovery in order to keep the cells alive no because cells we we, we see this also in vivo no that once you don't use for a for a while, no, the, the one arm or something, then you lose function, you lose you lose the structure, no, you then and then to keep this and to, to keep working on this, I think it's going to to be key. Also, there is a, there is some other research lines that aim to create a big organs, uh, fully functional organs, just with doing genetic modification of, of animals and then growing the organs. This is also quite quite uh, amazing, no? And and quite promising technology. And then I think it's going to be a like a like a concurrence or like a joining efforts all the different uh, like brands of, of research or science in order to first bioprinting can also be very useful for understanding in 3D, just for understanding and how how and once I mean as as the book that I showed before replacing the aging says that that we have been solving a lot of things during the last last hundred years or decades without understanding what is what is I mean as our gene has been replacing uh, hips has been and, and we don't understand fully or hundred percent I mean you don't need to understand in order to but the more you understand also can give you more like more more ideas no of what is going to be the solution. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, it was very nice to discuss, to see your presentation and to discuss some ideas of tissue engineer. Um, no doubt it's, it's the future because you cannot do tissue engineer without bioprinting. Bioprinting is, is the future for the field. But uh, yeah, you need to learn it together and improve it every, every time and every year. It is essential, yeah. The future, the future has to be creating from now on. And, and always I say, if you 
if you say like 100 years ago to my grand grandmother that we were talking from Brazil to here online, then uh -huh. know, or this is impossible, no? And yeah, then, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thing is putting talent, putting brains there, putting people, putting effort, putting working, people working in in a specific area. Uh, also having the the right resources, and with this we can get to the moon, to the moon, or these specific things to solve the, every time the the highest number of pathologies that we will all benefit from that because at the end of the day we will all be at any point of our life a passion. Thanks a lot, muito obrigado, and hope the next time to be there with you again. Yeah, yeah, I hope so. I hope so. In person. Okay, thank bye you. Bye. bye, bye. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Pessoal, a gente encerra então hoje a live, ok? É, e lembrando todo mundo então que semana que vem a gente se vê lá na imersão. Toda a equipe da GSL está super ansiosa por esse momento que já não acontece há algum tempinho por conta da pandemia. E é, vejo vocês lá. Agradecer mais uma vez o apoio do Senai, da Ependorf e a participação também da 3DBS. Até semana que vem. Tchau, tchau.